Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, greetings, Calvary. Great to have you joining us for your word for the day today. My name is Robert, and I'm grateful to have you watching, tuning in wherever you find yourself today. And uh, today I want to talk a little bit about repentance. It's a word that we use so often in the Christian walk. We encourage people to repent. We talk about the process of repenting. But sometimes we don't talk about the mechanics of it and what that actually means and and why we do it and and how we do it. And when you look at uh, even the the life of John the Baptist, he foretold the coming of Jesus. He was that 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 person who proclaimed the coming Messiah and his message was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he he, he preached a, a repentance-based message pointing people to turn their lives over to Jesus. And so I want to pause and just talk about that, but also talk about what we find in Psalm chapter 130, 130 today, that gives us some of the the mental and emotional and spiritual processing that happens with repentance. But essentially, we have to understand first what sin is. And sin is us rebelling against and going against God's plan for our life. And, And really, if you picture our life as a series of directional things and directional decisions, we understand that when we choose to sin, we're choosing to go against and away from God's plan for our life. And sometimes that's at a very rapid pace. Sometimes it's a little bit more meandering. But either way, it's going opposite of the direction that God has for us. And so the idea of repentance is us realizing what we've done, It's us confessing that sin to God and asking for forgiveness. But then the last part is us also changing direction. And, and you know, it's a reversal of direction. It's us making a U-turn. If we've been navigating in the wrong way, you don't fix that by continuing to go in the wrong direction. You fix that by turning around and getting on the right and correct path. And that's what repentance is. It's that equal parts of confession, but also a change in direction and decision making. It's a change of thoughts. It's a change of behavior, whatever is fitting based on the ways that we've gone away from God's plan for us. And in Psalm 130, we see a little bit of what happens internally in this process because there's there's some positive and there's some, some grieving and mourning when we realize and acknowledge our sin. And that's where the psalm starts. He says, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. He said, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? It's that that acknowledgement that the Lord is perfect and he is holy and just. And we are people who are full of sin and failure and regret and mistakes. We are full of sin. And if we were to, to get a report card for our holiness, it's not going to look pretty. But then the the psalm shifts and gives us some instruction and encouragement of what it looks like to repent and live a life of repentance. He says, If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Verse 4 says, But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him there is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. I've got a a few encouragements for you here for those times where you're confronted and, and convicted of the sin that is in your life, which is, if you're a Christian, our life is one of ongoing repentance from sin. This isn't a singular decision, but often a daily or sometimes multiple times a day process of repenting. And the first thing to do is just remember his faithfulness. We see that come out in the psalm that he is faithful to forgive us. Uh, I love 1 John 1, 9. It says, if we confess our sins, God is holy and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There, there is hope that we can have that whenever we bring our sin before God in full surrender and confession of that sin and a full commitment to repent from it, that our sin is wiped away. It is cleansed, it is forgiven in full with no uh, looming over us in the future, no debt to repay beyond what Jesus has done for us on the cross. But the second thing that we need to remember is that we need to reorient our, our lives on Jesus. See, in the psalm here, he, he, he points to that, I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits for the Lord, I, I fixate on you. If we want to defeat sin in our life, that happens by fixating all of our attention and focus on Jesus. 
It's not by trying harder not to do this sin, but by fixating more on who Jesus is and focusing on living our life for him. And so that's my encouragement for you today, is to, to remember that when we're confronted with sin in our life, that we can have forgiveness if we confess and repent for that. But the way that we find victory over sin is by fixating our eyes and our life on Jesus. By, as he says here, waiting for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, eagerly awaiting and, and fixating on what's coming and especially what's before us, and that needs to be Jesus. So today, if you've got an area of sin where you just feel like, man, I keep coming back to this, I can't find victory, don't fixate on the former failures, don't fixate on the struggle, but confess and repent of those and fix your eyes on Jesus, as Hebrews says, the author and perfecter of our faith. And in doing so, you get to find the joy of, of growing in faith, growing in becoming more like Jesus, and eventually believe that you'll find that that sin doesn't have the same power that it used to in your life. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this is encouraging for you, and I hope that you will wait on the Lord and fix your eyes on Him. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.